Welcome to Music in Mind with Anthony Calkins. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about some processes I've been using in the program Ableton Live in my current live set, which is called Songs for a New Era. And I've mainly been using it as a computer drummer for a couple of reasons. One, I don't currently have the money to hire professional drummers. And second, it's sort of an interesting intellectual exercise to see if I can create programs that make computer drummers feel fulfilling to play with and also seem fulfilling to listen to from an audience perspective. So here I have an Ableton Live set called On The Stream, which is the name of one of my songs in Songs for a New Era. And as you can see, there's two tracks here. There's a drum track, which has a drum rack in it with various sounds. And then also there's an audio track, which I'm just using to record audio right now, so you can ignore that. So if we take a look at the drum track, there are a number of clips in that track. There's verse A, verse B, verse C, chorus A, chorus B, and bridge. And what each of these clips is, is a composed bit of music for drums. And if you take a look at verse A, this is the main beat of the song. This is what the drums play most of the time. Then verse B is a variation on that main beat. You see it's a little bit different. And verse C is another variation on that same beat. And the, the way this works is I use a function built into Ableton called a follow action. And what it can do is, after it plays this clip once, it'll ask itself, should I play this clip again, or should I go on to the next clip? And I do that with a probability. So it's more likely to play itself again, but it might go on to the next clip. And the same happens with clip verse B, and the same happens with clip verse C. Verse B, though, never asks if it's going to play itself again. It either goes on to verse C or back to verse A and it's more likely to go back to verse A. So uh, it sort of biases verse A because that's the, the primary beat for the verse section of the song, but it might go to any of these, and it'll be different every time. It's, it's unpredictable, um, but it also that's, that's what makes it feel more natural because it, it's all based on the same idea, but it, it'll change up. And the same process works for chorus A and chorus B. So if we take a listen, we can hear what it sounds like. Now another thing I like to use uh, to add an element of unpredictability to these drum beats is I'll put a randomizer on these different clips and uh, what the randomizer does is it's a MIDI effect and if I've told it say to play a kick drum a certain percentage of the time it will not play a kick drum but it will play a different drum in the drum rack that I've set up. It does that in various ways and you can control how far away from that kick drum you want the other drum to be. Maybe it'll play a snare, maybe it'll play a tom, or maybe you only want it to sometimes play a snare instead of a kick drum. So you can control that with the randomizer. And then, so what I do is I usually set that to be pretty low, so, it gen so the computer generally plays what I've written, but sometimes it'll swap out one drum for another. And the third piece of unpredictability that I like to add in my live sets is a beat repeater, which is an audio effect built into Ableton. And what that'll do is it'll take a beat or um, a drum hit or something, and it will grab it and repeat it over and over again, um, sometimes very fast, sometimes very slowly. Um, but what that does is it gives it kind of a, a glitchy sound. So let's listen to each of these different effects uh, one at a time. So let's start by making a new clip and let's put some kick hits on big beat one and big beat two because we are in six eight. And so we'll have kick, 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 kick. 
we turn off the beat repeater and we turn off the randomizer, this is what it sounds like. Kick, 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 right? So let's turn on the randomizer now. It's set to 0%, so it's all just going to be kicks. But as I increase this percentage, sometimes those kicks will be something different. So already that adds a sense of unpredictability and it adds more interest. Now if we go over here to the beat repeater, it's going to be a little bit different. And we turn up the chance to 100%. So sometimes it'll grab it and go brrrr and just catch the note and repeat it again and again. This is something that's uh, more interesting with a more complicated beat. So now... Let's listen to one of the beats I've created with the beat repeater and the randomizer. So yeah, that's sort of the sound I'm going for. And now I'm going to play a little bit along with this live set just to show you what it feels like in a performative context. Thanks for watching Music in Mind with Anthony Calkins. This is our fourth episode, and if you're enjoying it so far, please like it, please subscribe, please leave a comment or share, especially. If you really like my work, please visit my Patreon page and consider pledging. Any amount is, of course, appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.